Over 15 miles from the mainland of Michigan's Lower Peninsula, one of the nation's most remote lighthouses is signaling a volunteer. My name's Robert Mativier, and uh, recently I started doing my family heritage, looking back in the past, and I found four of my great-great-grandfathers worked here. Three of them were blood, the fourth one was through marriage. Louis Mativier reported for duty at Spectacle Reef in 1887. Henry Mativier was here two years later. He transferred in 1894 to nearby Bois Blanc Island, where he retired when the light was deactivated. Joseph Mativier was also a keeper here from 1910 to 1916, so it wasn't a surprise that their descendant would be interested in duty here on the east end of the Straits of Mackinac. You know, I got pictures and stuff, and uh... I, I want like I didn't know what they did, you know. I didn't know that they were saving people and stuff. It's like when I walk through there, um, it's like I'm taking the steps they were taking. But when I found they're restoring it, I'm like, I need in. I need to be part of this group, like forever. Pat McKinstry knows exactly what Rob is feeling. But the inside, I saw this lighthouse. I ran up here and I hugged the tower, and they have pictures of me. I think I was probably wearing the same clothing after that day, just hugging this light tower, looking stupid, you know. This kinship is from 20 years of researching and working at lighthouses around Michigan. Pat said his fascination came from a trip to the Straits, where an abandoned light was found nearby. And when I was a little kid, probably four or five years old, um, there was a lighthouse in Mackinac City, called Mackinac Point, and at the time it was um, really bad shape, bore it up, wasn't open. And I found, what is that? Because it's a lighthouse. I said, can I go in it? He goes, no. Well, why? No one lives there. Why? You know, you pay the 30 questions of why. And then finally, the last question was, you know, I asked her why again. And the last response was, because nobody loves it anymore. And I was hooked. The state of Michigan took over the Mackinac Point light and restored it. But over 100 lights in the state don't have government protection. Pat started volunteering at Saginaw's rear range light when he was a kid, mowing the grass and learning maritime history. So you know, these structures were built with taxpayers' dollars by people 100, 200 years ago to save the lives of the sailors on these boats, like this one going by. And those sailors never met the light keepers, and the light keepers never got a thank you. They lived in you no know, very in some cases remote, isolated conditions. You don't see another human soul for three months at a time. And you know, they, they dedicate their lives to saving the lives of sailors on boats. Like what's ironic, they're going behind us here now. Pat joined with a half dozen other lighthouse enthusiasts to form the Spectacle Reef Preservation Society, a nonprofit group that bought the lighthouse and have been raising funds for its renovation. The growing membership sees the team's dedication as the board of directors work alongside them. The people that work in this society, you know, they're all awesome. This weekend, the goal was I'm going to send people up here for our scraping up here because that entire wall doesn't need it. Most of this wall doesn't need it. Most of the ceiling doesn't need it. So we're going to scrape what's loose, and then we can paint and encapsulate it. Then we can bring those bunk beds up here and just turn them into a bunk. The workload for the first few years will be heavy as volunteers clean up nearly a half century of falling paint and other debris. It's tedious work under protective gear as lead paint was detected among the colored layers. It will have to be encapsulated so members can safely sleep here once again. You slap it on, huh? Oh, I'm still cleaning. The job is really tough, but then when you've got half a dozen people helping you with that job, it's so much easier, and I love that. Pat says chores will always be a part of the experience here. You're gonna have a jobs. So you're gonna have to have to help wash windows, you're gonna have to help paint the buildings, you're gonna have to, you know, perform some of those duties that keepers performed. So you get a real taste of what it was to be a light keeper out here. This room we're gonna turn into a workshop, so there's a workbench here, tools, and machinery and all. So all that upstairs eventually will come down here. Every level of the lighthouse will be utilized. One floor will be a museum. Others will be for bedrooms. Eventually, even the kitchen will be restored. This is deck six, pedestal room. And based on the pedestal sat here in this big donut, came up, fired out on the chariot wheels and filled its entire diameter, and then the lens was on top. So 
you guys can go up there and look around. I'm going to put the flag out here so everybody knows we're here. It's kind of a tradition. It's not too windy. And uh, meet me outside when you're ready. The parapet outside the tower is a highlight of any visit. Mackinac Island's right there. You will see the Grand Hotel, you will see Mission Point Resort, you will see the fort, you will see some of the ferry boats going by, and you know, you'll hear it all plain as day and see it all plain as day. The views are great. Look, there's that freighter, it's getting closer. Just the whole atmosphere thing, being out here. Rob can't wait until the lighthouse is in the same condition as when his relatives worked here. With three visits out here already, he says it's worth all of the work being done. The people that board with life, I think this is something they need because it changes everything, you know. Especially if you can sleep here for the ones that do sleep here. That's crazy. High winds and forecasted thunderstorms kept Rob and his wife from camping out on the deck. I slept on the first floor. I put my tent in there and that was kind of cool to sleep where my great grandfather slept. This is called the lantern. This is where they actually have the lens for the light. And at one time, one of the largest on the Great Lakes, a second order lens that's now on display in Toledo. The glass around here, though, is broken. Look at there's been bird strikes and other damage that's here. And that's one of the other challenges for this group is each of these panes of glass is $100. So your donations help to restore this glass back to its original condition. Want to pick your own or? Oh, look at you a day of hard work is always followed by a hot meal and fellowship with the crew. When weather cooperates, a small fire pit provides amazing stargazing on the crib deck. The bonfire. Let's talk about that was crazy. Who has a bonfire in the middle of nowhere? And with 35 mile an hour winds, it's, oh, it's great. Like nobody does that. You know, anybody can go visit a land-based lighthouse. They can go climb a tower and take their selfies and swim in the lake or whatever, you know. They can go visit a bed and breakfast if they, you know, want to spend a night in a lighthouse and think it's kind of cool, you know. But this is a totally different way of life out here. These keepers experienced. I've always wanted to actually volunteer at a lighthouse. I finally just picked one and went with it. This one being my, one of my favorite ones. You have to be a member to stay the night at Spectacle Reef, but day visits are being planned as well. Donations are always encouraged, and you might even catch the president embracing what was once the most expensive lighthouse ever built. I'm, I was told I'm only allowed to do it now opening day and closing day. And the truth is I sneak it in once in a while when no one's looking, so. <laughs> it's, it's weird because like you give her a hug and you can kind of feel like she's almost talking to you, like she's smiling, you know. For more on the history of Spectacle Reef, as well as yearly and lifetime membership forms, please see spectaclereef.org. Do it. The adventure. I love them. The adventure. Just to hit the waves and like, okay, I don't see land anywhere. Like, it's like you and the boat and your crew. Like, it's a great adventure. I'm doing this until I die.